Cardsphere, the trading card platform, is ceasing operation November 1st, 2023. This is emblematic of many issues facing Magic the Gathering, and this company is just another casualty. Adapt or die. Survival of the fittest. But what happens if you can't adapt quick enough? Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. And no, it's not a super go lucky happy day in the world of Magic the Gathering. I don't always like reporting on this kind of stuff, but it is news that people need to know about and it does happen. And that's what makes it a little bit sad to talk about. Just like when an LGS closes down and I've seen 30, 40 closed down in my 30 years of Magic. You know, one day they're there, the next day they're just gone. It says they're closed for renovations, they never reopen. If you have a really close relationship with one of the owners, they say, look, man, I'm closing down like 10 days. I can't pay the next month's rent and I'm gone. This has happened year over year since I've been a teenager. And it's always sad to see because they get in for the right reasons. They're excited. They want to own a card shop. They want to have people gather and play the games and, and the other trading card games and things like Warhammer that they all love. But sometimes it's not sustainable. The numbers don't add up and you're forced to close your doors. LGS or trading card platform, it's sad. It, it's always one of those things. And Card Sphere looks like they're the latest, you know, casualty in this kind of war of adaptation where Wizards has put out so much product. They've ramped up things so much that a company like this just can't keep pace with all the changes. And it looks like it's not financially or fiscally responsible to continue doing what they're doing. Here's a, a link from their website here's an image here it says august 31st of 2023 sign up of new users will be disabled all marketplace is turned off but you can re-enable it if you want to continue selling your cards now you guys think okay september 7th which is coming right up right like you know next week international trades will be disabled october 11th that's like a month away right after that domestic trades are now disabled and then november 1st the last day of operation it says all outstanding trades are disputed automatically. Cardsphere admin will work toward getting all outstanding trades resolved. More information will be shared closer to this date. Now, of course, most people will stop using this service really quickly. They don't want to get tied up and bungled up. But I got to be honest, that little statement there of how they've decided to do it looks very organized, well thought out. And it looks like they have a plan in place to ease this transitional burden from players and not make it a big thing. I like that. I think that looks very professional to me and makes me feel like kind of like, oh, okay, they, they care. And that's what most of these people do when they start businesses like this. They care. They get in for the right reasons. Whether it's an LGS owner who loves Warhammer 40k, if it's a person who loves Magic the Gathering, or whatever card games or board games, that persona of person usually gets in because they just love it. Not because they want to make a lot of money, but they have to make enough to stay in business. And these guys are doing it. They actually have, there's a further statement. I'll put a link, by the way, to this uh, website afterwards. But there's actually a little statement there saying, you know, they're going to cut operations now before it gets worse. They never got to the critical mass they needed to make a real go of this business. Now, I remember it was a Puka trade. I think it ended in like 2021. Like, I remember a friend who used to use it all the time and loved the service and really didn't have any issues. Um, I know a lot of these kind of services, people will have some disputes about near mint and, and you know, this has got a ding or a neck. Some people can be very finicky. I understand that entirely. And I can see why there could be problems. And now they're going to try to resolve everything. And now you can't adapt quick enough. It's over. It's done. And that's a shame because it's another business gone. It's another Magic the Gathering service that will no longer be available to players. And this was a platform you could buy, trade, sell, all kinds of stuff. And now it's gone. When that's gone, that's less choice. When there is less choice, you are forced down certain avenues like eBay. Maybe you're going to have to go to your local LGS and take a lot less. Or maybe they only accept trades. We don't know where it's going right now for Magic. But this is just one of those problems you see. That when a business like this shuts down, even if it wasn't highly successful, you kind of go, wow still kind of sad. It makes you think what's going on and the psyche of how this may affect other Magic the Gathering players out there like yourselves at home going, really? I never used that service. And I'll be honest, I've never used this company either. As an older person closing in on 50, I look at this stuff and say, I can buy most of the cards I want. I usually save for them. I do trade stuff in sometimes. Usually I'm working toward a reserve list card though. So I understand the whole idea of trading Magic cards now, it's kind of, you don't see it very often. 
Okay, most times I see somebody who offered me to look at their trade binder, they were kind of flexing. They wanted to show me cool stuff and they said none of this reserveless stuff was for trade, which of course is what I would be interested in. So I'm like, okay, I get it, no problem. I still looked because I love to look at magic cards, but trading has kind of gone away a lot of the a lot of times. You don't see it much in stores anymore. Most people buy the cards directly and people skip the middle thing of talking to each other and just trade directly into their store. And they're gonna have to do that a lot more. Or they're gonna have to go on a Facebook group and try to find some way of, of working out with people you trust on your Facebook group. I mean, there's a lot of groups out there. I know you have to be vouched for to get in and there's still issues that arise from all that kind of stuff. So keep it in mind that this is just another casualty that now has one less avenue available to buy, trade, sell. Just like when Puka Trade left, it kind of left you that kind of, you know, huh, really? Wow, it's gone? Okay. And some people, again, didn't know it existed, but others used it all the time doing hundreds of trades and really enjoying the services that were provided by these companies and again if they can't adapt quick enough mainly because wizards of the coast just puts out so many products this is the the end effect of what happens couldn't adapt couldn't make a go of it closes up and says they're done it's a sad day but it made me start thinking about what's next you know we have a weak marketplace for magic right now there's a lot of good cards a lot of people enjoying it but if you don't have some collectability, some value to the cards, it's going to hurt Wizards in the end. It's going to hurt the company who's trying to generate that revenue. They can only push the players so far, so I'm curious to see how it'll all pan out in the end. But I honestly believe, and I still do, like I, I think about this all the time. I talk with my friends and people in my Discord groups and emails basically daily now. How we think and when we think things will turn around. And I don't have a map for this one. As much as I have all kinds of like spreadsheets and stuff kind of telling me where I think things will go... The actual, if I knew, then I have a crystal ball, I'm Nostradamus and everything will be perfect. But right now I still see a bottoming out. When a company like this is gone, when I see one or two LGSs that are in my network closing up because they just can't make a go of it anymore, rents have gone up, inflation has got them and the shipping fees from distributors cost them more and more. And eventually they close down because they're in a smaller town. They don't have a big enough revenue stream, enough foot traffic to make a go. So they're done. They had a great little go, uh, a good time in, in COVID times because a lot of people are playing board games, a lot of things, and now it's kind of back to normal. And unfortunately, back to normal had a whole bunch of extra taxes added onto it, all the carbon tax stuff here in Canada, and it's just done. Sad, but it's true. It is, it is that thing survival of the fittest. And guys, somebody will probably come along at some other point and try to make a go of it again. Maybe they have a better business model, a better planning, better software. There's always somebody trying to improve things and move it forward, and maybe they will be successful. Maybe they will make a real go of it and make it last. I can't speak to that. I just know when I saw that and I, and I looked at it, I kind of went, it's kind of a shame. That's all, just one of those things you go, didn't work out the way you did. And then I thought about the trading and the buying and selling of cards. I'm going, yeah, there's a few less places. There's a little bit less. And the funny thing is that price memory players have, they all still want top dollar, right? When you want cash, especially in magic cards, most people know, they'll say, I want like 80% of, of whatever, TCG player, 80% of uh, MTG stocks, right? But really, I think you're gonna get to the point where people aren't gonna offer more than 50%. Maybe not right away, but in cash, you might see players saying, eh, I'm not willing to take that risk anymore because I'm hearing more and more players just go, I'm cherry picking the singles route. You guys have heard it many times on this channel lately and it's because those emails keep rolling in. It's like, ah, I decided not to buy these boxes. I'm buying some singles. Although I'm glad to see some people did buy Wilds of Eldraine. There was some images there that were pretty cool to say, hey, I decided to buy a couple of boxes. We're going to have a draft night. It's going to be epic. But they're splitting that box with six friends to have their own private draft, which I think was pretty awesome. So either way, I thought this was important information to kind of relate to you guys and keep that kind of stuff in the news. Keep it in your mind to let you know this stuff does happen. It is sad, but it's it's going to happen. It's not the end of the world. Magic's not, ah, the sky's not falling. No, it's nothing like that. It's just one of those days you go, yeah, another casualty, another thing that couldn't make a go of it. Sad, hopefully they move on to something awesome. Hopefully they still love magic and keep playing it. And maybe, maybe you never know, 10 years from now, they get to make a go of it again. Maybe things change. Maybe they have better system checks in place. I don't know. I don't know all the financials of that company, but it's a shame to see that card sphere just isn't going to last. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. How do you feel about stuff like this when you hear about it? What are you guys thinking about the future of magic? I'm curious and I want you guys to share it with me. And don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bells. 
I upload content each and every day of the week. This weekend, we have the hottest selling cards in Magic on Saturday, and then the Reserve List Edition on Sunday. And if you still need more Magic after that, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time every Sunday, you're going to get the Moxman live. That's right, guys. You can catch me on my live stream, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Looking forward to seeing you all there. Don't forget, everyone, shop smart, shop as smart, and always bring a friend to Magic. A big shout out and thank you to all the fantastic supporters I have on my channel, my YouTube membership members, and of course my Patreon members who make daily uploaded content possible by supporting this channel. Thanks again everyone for being here. I'm looking forward to seeing you this weekend on the live stream. Have a great day. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for finding me in this nacho cheese universe that is YouTube. Remember that intro? That was like a long time ago. I used to use it all the time. Now I only I only rehash it once in a while because you guys know that I love nachos and cheese. I still do. And yes, I still have the largest collection of Mox Ambers in the world and pretty much nobody's ever going to beat me probably unless the card goes to like junk status, which will probably happen at some point, but mine are all paid for, so it's good. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble. Thanks for being here, everyone. I am stoked up on coffee. I'm feeling good. We got a live stream this weekend. We are going to have a good one. Now, the live stream may be at the other location, um, which means the opening of cards for, for the winner of the uh, live, you know, the, the monthly giveaway will be a little bit different. I'm just letting you guys know here. So there's a record of me telling you it may happen, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. I may even try to bring up the wheel so I have the wheel with me. Or if not, we'll do the envelopes. We'll figure something out. It's going to be a good time. Um, we're so close to Wilds of Eldraine now. I can't wait to see how things pan out, but like 60 days out. So I'm going to be watching this market crazy close because that, that quick study card just keeps selling copies, man. So I want to know how things are going to go. But in case you guys haven't noticed, you made it this far in the video, stuff's happening on Ixalan too, okay? Cards are starting to move on Ixalan. There's a few little things I'm probably going to note in next week's videos, but I want to make sure all the numbers add up first. Anyway, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for hanging out, coming over to the channel every day, checking things out, and being part of the Moxman's magic community. You guys are awesome. Anyway, have a great day. Chill out. Enjoy the day. Maybe play some magic cards. Oh, it's totally slowing down, but it's still moving. We're just inching closer now. Tick, 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 tick. We're getting there, man. We're going to get there. Have an awesome day, guys. Thanks for being here. Don't forget, shop smart, shop best smart.